What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company. Another jig streamer video. So I've got all these jigs flying around in my head and I thought before, I don't want to bounce around too much so I have this one other streamer-ish kind of pattern that uh, I just wanted to share with you guys before I kind of move on a little bit to bucktail and stuff like that. This is very similar to the one I posted um, just the other day but it's a different build and it it's a little bit bulkier I mean, this is this is dry so I got this wet yesterday and I just let it sit out and dry you can kinda tell I mean it's hard to tell I don't have that other jig but it's just a little bit bulkier now you can kinda see it's getting pretty close to my hook but I'm gonna use a hook today that's a little bit wider of a gap this jig that I used I was messing around with this pattern for a while and I just grabbed a bunch of jigs and put them on my bench that I really wasn't gonna use I have a bunch of these pink VMC jigs and they're just good to kind of experiment around and if I end up liking it I can throw it in my box if it doesn't turn out well then I haven't wasted a four dollar jig and it's really hard to to clean these off once you get them on so again little streamer pattern jig this one is a little bit again of a different build so I've got this is a VMC tech set hook in a quarter ounce and you can see I've already put I didn't want to waste your guys's time what you watching me put this this is Blaine chocolate body tubing in quarter inch Maybe I can do a little FYI video of how I put these on. It's a little bit trickier with the lead head instead of just having a, a plain hook. But this is a quarter ounce. And you can see here that I have a microscopic uh, separation between my body tubing and my jig head. And that's intentional. The only thing I'm going to put up here is going to be Senyo's laser dub. And the more I use this dubbing for heads, the more I fall in love with it. There's some other good ones. The Titan dub from Nightmare Musky Flies is great too. But this stuff, for some reason, just keeps a bigger profile. It doesn't mat down as much. So I'm going to use white, blue, and silver actually for the head. What I'm going to do first, I've got 210 white. You, I mean, I, a lot of the jigs I was tying before, just for some practice, not practice, but getting the pattern down, I was using 140. I mean, you could easily get away with 140 on um, with this. I'm going to put a little bucktail down, but really, you don't need to rev down super hard. The only reason I'm going with 210 is because this actually has a dubbing brush in it. And when I tie that off, I want a little bit more tension on my thread, but you could easily get away with 140. So I've got a black deer tail. This is going to be kind of a gray, a little bit of blue. Again, I, I usually just try to match the head. There's some chartreuse in here, but I wasn't really feeling that that color on this body would go well. I got this black bucktail and I went through my bucktails and I tried to find hair or a tail with hair that was thinner because I don't want super coarse hair. It would be nice to have the coarse hair because it'll be thicker because I want some meat at this tail section but I kind of went for movement instead of bulk and you kind of have to, not that the thicker bucktail is gonna just be stiff in the water but I want I went with the uh, the opposite so you make the decision that you want I'm gonna clean out all of these butts these nasty little stragglers at the bottom and then I'm gonna measure this out I want my bait, again, just like in the last video, five inches or a little bit longer. I can always add a stinger hook on this, so I, I'm not worried about making a 
five and a half, six inch bait because if I'm missing fish, I can add, or even a trailer hook too, you can get away with adding that too. Um, so I'm going to measure this out. I don't want to go all the way down. I'm just going to go maybe a little bit farther than that. Just so I have a little room back there. And I'll trim this off. Kind of cord up my thread. I'm actually going to bring it down a little bit farther. Really get those flush. Go about right there. Pretty close, not quite to the bend. I always wrap down a little bit farther than I need to. Just out of habit almost. You can do whatever you want. So I'm just going to get that on there and I'm going to go 360 around. This will help a little bit with fouling too, but really don't get a ton of fouling just because if you bring a comb in the boat with you and you just comb it every once in a while, it uh, ends up combing out pretty good. So I'm not worried about a ton of fouling. If I had a stinger hook on here, it's really going to foul that, but hopefully I don't get to that point. Hopefully a jig like this, the fish just want to eat it. So I've got my deer tail down, my bucktail, nice and tight. And the next thing I'm going to put down is going to be Arctic Goat. So I'm doing gray Arctic Goat. And I've already, this gray that I have, had a ton of super long fibers. I mean, 10 inches. So I took a couple minutes to kind of pick out the super long ones and restack them. So the base of this is pretty thick, and this is going to be the longest part of my jig. So I'm going to make sure I get that length that I want. And whenever there's a couple little stragglers down here, when you get it wet, I'll just trim that off. I know you're not, it's kind of frowned upon in fly tying is to just cut straight, but when it's so thin like that, you can't tell. So I'm going to measure that out, and... I'm going to actually cut this. In the last video, I folded it back, but I'm not going to do that in this one just because I'm going to put a little craft fur down to help with that. So I'll put this down, two loose wraps, wrap it a little bit. It loves to get all tangled up so you can separate it like that. Lose a bunch of fibers. I'm going to get this all the way around. I just want to make sure that I get this around my hook because my hook is going to, this is going to ride hook point up. So I want to make sure that the top, what's going to end up being the top, gets covered. And then I can just make sure that that gets down. I can see, so this is going to be a little bit longer, which is just fine. I can either trim it or add another hook if I end up needing to. So the last thing I'm going to put down before my dubbing brush is going to be just a little bit of craft fur. Craft fur is kind of like marabou where it mats down a ton and it gets super thin. I mean, crazy thin when it gets wet. But I'm not going to like reverse tie this or anything. I'm just going to put it down. And again, I'm going to kind of go to where my bucktail is. Just to leave that little bit of goat happy. And I'm not worried about where I'm wrapping this here. Because I'm actually going to come all the way up to the end of my thread wraps. And that's where I'm going to put my... That's where I'm going to start my dubbing brush. And I just don't want a huge ball of thread because that makes it harder to wrap that dubbing brush onto it. So I'm wrapping this a little bit further up. And 
I'm going to get that all the way around. Craft fur is kind of tricky to wrap all the way around because it just, it's so thin. So you kind of just got to muscle your way all the way around. Get it where I want it to. A couple over here. And this is all going to be covered anyway, so. So I'm going to do pretty tight wraps on this. If anything, I'll start. Now, tight meaning I'll pull hard. And I'm not going to super worry about the brush, to, you know, when I'm spinning this, for them to be perfectly on each other. Because, first of all, it's so thick. I don't want this to get all tangled up. I'm going to try and get my thread around there. I don't need this to be right on my last wrap. I'm really not too worried about that. I comb this out. Make sure that I'm not getting a bunch of my other stuff pushed down. Push it back. Give it a good tight wrap. Maybe I can try and get one more after this, just for the top. Then I can tie off about right here. So I want to make sure that I don't get a ton of the fibers that I've already wrapped. I just want the fibers in, this is my right hand. I just want to tie that off. I don't want to tie off, and I'm going to give this probably six or seven wraps just to make sure it's down, and then I can comb it. I want to get enough wraps on here when I, if I happen to cut my thread when I'm cutting this off, I have enough wraps on there where it's not going to loosen my whole brush because then you got to restart. Because if it's loose on there, and now I've lost track because I'm talking, I'll just do one more. You can count, you can rewatch the video and count how many I did. I don't know. And I'm going to take my synthetic scissors. I don't want to use my good scissors because this is wire. I'm going to cut that off and I just want to be careful with where that wire is. And I'm just going to randomly kind of wrap down. So now I can comb this out. And again, this looks like uh, you just woke up, if you've got long hair, it looks like you just woke up from a good night's sleep. And I just want to make sure that I can still get my cone. It's a little off down here because I have this big bump from where I tied off. But that shouldn't be, maybe I can just try and push. I just don't know where my that wire is. But that's all right, I'll just tie it off. So I'll get this combed out. Get really in there. There we go. Couple really good ones. And you can see, I'm really not getting a ton of stuff this is a really well-made brush. And maybe I'm just ignorant or naive. Maybe 
all dubbing brushes are like that unless I make it myself but so I'm just gonna get this thread off as I'm these are messy flies I'll just do a couple turns and then I'm gonna I'm actually gonna lay some super glue down so I don't need this to be like crazy whip finished I'm just gonna put down just some Loctite brush not necessarily for durability just because I don't want this thing coming loose and that'll harden like a rock so now I can push this back and again I've just got that little bit it's just not perfect which is alright sometimes but you can kind of see this dubbing brush makes a nice body and the reason I ended up adding this uh, chocolate body tubing is because I, the thickest part of this bait should be right by my head and I need to find a better jig head than this but I do like these VMC ones so I'm gonna come right here right in my tiny little gap because when you put this dubbing down anyway you want it to be right by the head and now I really don't have anywhere to go but this way so I've got this is Senyo's laser dub silver minnow belly and just fluorescent blue just a little fluorescent blue and then this is white and the white is what I'm gonna put well it looks like it's on the top now but it's actually the bottom so I want to make sure that these are all pretty even and I'm not too worried I'm gonna go probably 60 40 ish with my dubbing and I'm gonna do a loose wrap and I'm gonna get that kind of flared out and then I can give it some tight wraps so it stays where I want it when I'm catching fish and I can flip it and I have more on this one than the other one just a little bit so again this is blue and gray I don't know which one's gonna show up more on the camera but I'm gonna go about the same I'll give it that loose wrap make sure that this jig's gonna have dubbing all the way around it and the trickiest part is getting it perfect halfway through the jig the colors but really if that's your biggest worry then you're probably tying a decent jig so I want to make sure I get all of that down well and then the first one I'm going to do is going to be this white again fold that back separate those a little bit so I can get my thread through This blue doesn't want to follow the rules. Fold that back. And once I have one good wrap, then I can kind of just try and get all of it pushed back. And then I can comb her out. So again, this is going to look like a giant mess. But once this gets wet, it just completely takes shape.
give it a couple more wraps. Don't stab your finger. And if I, I, I could do a red collar here, just to add just a little gills. Uh, you know, you see guys all over YouTube with markers and stuff. You can color it up, you can do whatever you want. Add a couple, maybe a white or a red dot, or you could add some black. I've kind of been tying a lot of black and white, so I think the next video I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some olives and browns in my next ones because I just get sick of tying the same stuff over and over. So I'm going to whip finish this off and I'm going to get it wet and we'll see how we did. Alright. Looks like a jumble. We'll see how she turns out. All right, so the, here she is, sopping wet. So eventually, when it fully dries, you can kind of see. I mean, this one was a little bit shorter. I wanted it to be a little bit longer. I might trim that tail a little bit, but um, if you can see, I've still got a pretty decent amount of room by my hook. And really, this is just a bunch of fluff anyway. So I'm not worried about missing hook sets because there's too much and even when it's wet like this it's still I don't know it still seems a little bit thin to me um, I need to find some other jig heads potentially but I've got a bunch of jig heads I'm going through uh, I just saw this blue and white I kinda like the pattern and so I went with it but another jig streamer I maybe that's what I'm going with a jig streamer I you call it what you want leave a comment below name it you could call it garbage if you want so jig streamer quarter ounce VMC VMC tech set hook juniors fishing company juniorsfishing.com jigs jigs jigs